Hello everyone, welcome along to another tactics video here on the channel. My name is Ash or Brummer18, whichever you prefer. On this channel, we like to do tactics replication videos on top of a whole host of other things, and we've got another one for you today. In this video, I've got a really fun one for you. This was a really fun, super fun tactic to uh, create and play with, and that is Carlo Ancelotti's 4-3-3 system. It was actually one of the more tougher systems that we've done in recent times. Uh, a lot of kind of interchanging moving parts here and there that we're going to kind of talk about. We're going to have a look through the formation. There's a few position changes there. You should also bear in mind that this tactic was created and tested using my custom sliders, so the gameplay might actually be a little bit different from what I've tested compared to what you will see so do just bear that one in mind as well you can find the sliders on my channel before we do get into the 433 system let me first quickly remind you to go and check out my patreon the link to that is down below on there you can get access to lots of fantastic perks and rewards including my custom tactics package with deep dives and rankings and ratings on every tactic that we cover on the channel as well as exclusive tactics videos that aren't on youtube behind the scenes videos early access to videos discord server access and all that good stuff as well as my podcast got a brand new video games podcast podcast ongoing on the channel a couple of episodes out already the links are all down below to all your favorite podcast apps or you can find the video version on this channel so please go and check that out subscribe to the video and ring the bell to get notifications every time i upload if you haven't done so already and with that being said let's talk about the positions so then first things first we have a 433 system it's the general 433 holding uh, giving you that bat four the defensive midfielder two central midfielders and the striker and the two wingers naturally so a couple of position changes. One is the fullbacks. We are going to want to change these to wingbacks, the both of them. And what that's going to do is that's going to get them wider and it's going to get them further forward as well, particularly when you're looking to play out from the back. And this is how we can recreate their system best. They're very, very attacking. The wingers are going to invert and make room for them to create that width. And that's what we're really looking to do there. I found it actually more kind of accurate to replicate their roles rather than having them at base fullback, uh, right and left back. Uh, with the midfielders, they're both at central midfield, but you want to change a couple of things. One is that you want to make sure that Luka Modric is actually at CM, whereas with Tony Crows, he's going to be at LCM. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to change their starting positions a little bit, just their general positioning in the game. Crows will take a couple of steps out wider which is what you're looking for. He's going to support those two guys. Whereas Modric, who, when we come to talk about Valverde's role on the wing, he doesn't need to come out wide. So you're going to want to leave him in the central areas a bit more. Other than that, there are no position changes. So next, let's talk about the tactics. So worth bearing in mind, we also have an attacking game plan with some tweaks and stuff. So I will talk about that very, very shortly. But first, with the balance game plan, defensive style is press after possession loss to give you that counter-pressing system. They'll very much look to try and win the ball back quickly if and when they do lose possession. The width is on 20, giving you a narrow line. One thing you'll start to notice is that we're going to really keep this with the kind of bulk figures in terms of 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. And that's really going to be a thing running through from this video onwards now we have this on 20 and it's going to give you that nice compact narrow shape the depth is on 60 meaning you've got a kind of mid block here and that's really how Carlo Ancelotti has played his entire career it's kind of a philosophy they don't want to be too passive which is why it's on 60 they do still kind of push up the pitch uh, and it helps to kind of uh, complement that counter pressing system as well um, but they don't want to leave themselves too kind of open at the back but even though they have a, a really fast defence, particularly in this. You're looking at the likes of Mendy, Alaba, Rudiger, Carvajal, all you know, quite fast. Um, they can still kind of have that support blanket with the depth only being on 60. Uh, offensively, we've got slow build-up from goalkeeper restarts. They're going to look to try and play it from the back, and they're generally going to do that anyway. Um, but when they get into chance creation, it's going to be on forward runs. And what this is going to do is really good way of replicating how they do it in real life because what you'll notice is when they do regain the ball or when they enter the middle third all of a sudden particularly the front three they are like steam trains they just storm ahead Benzema Vinicius Jr whether it'll be like you know say Valverde or Rodrigo etc these guys are just storming forward looking to hit teams looking to exploit those gaps and hit those gaps at the space that is being left by the opposition and they really do a good job of doing that is how a lot of their goals and a lot of their attacking moves do come but with the slow build you still got that emphasis on that possession that kind of um, playing through the thirds and that calculated play 
The width is on 60. It's a little bit wider. It's a little bit stretched. They really try and kind of force the gaps from the opposition with this slightly wider shape. You'll also notice that the central midfielders are going to try and create a little bit more space in between each other because what they like to do is they like to stretch the opposition central midfielders out uh, and then create gaps in order for the the others to run into say for example wing backs or or Benzema dropping up etc you're really just trying to make as much space as you possibly can you don't want it too wide though because you're going to get players too far away from each other and it's going to really impact that kind of shorter possession style uh, the players in the box is on seven you seven giving you three to four players in the box naturally the three attackers are going to get in there and it's often one of either the full backs or the central midfielders like Modric in this case who may also come into the box at times finally with corners and free kicks both of these are on four they like to get a lot of men forward set pieces a big part of Carlo Ancelotti's game um, and that is reflected here as well so moving on to the player instructions and starting off with Courtois we have got him on comes crosses for saving on crosses it's really going to help to relieve that pressure from you in those crossing situations but saving outside the box is on balance Courtois throughout his whole career has never really been that sweeper keeper. Um, he's a little bit more safe in that regard. He likes to play it safe. Now, annoyingly in the gameplay that you'll notice somewhere late on in the game, I do actually concede a goal because I bring him out too far and, and they kind of exploit that, which was silly of me really. But generally, you, you don't want him to do that. So don't make the same mistake I did in the gameplay. Uh, with the two centre-backs... Didn't notice any changes there, so you're absolutely fine. Um, Rudiger, you could change to aggressive interceptions out of a personal preference because that is, is very much what he's like in terms of he likes to kind of step up onto the opposition, put it on the opposition. But as regards to this kind of system, Ancelotti doesn't really like that. He doesn't like his centre-backs kind of doing that. Uh, say, for example, what we see with... Uh, someone like Manchester City, for example, set against Liverpool, which which put them in a lot of trouble where players are trying to step out onto the uh, opposition players to win the ball back. Um, with the two fullbacks, they're both on the same. Remember, we have changed both of these to wing back. We've got Mendy and Carvalho. Uh, their attacking runs are on joining the attack. Their run type is on overlap. These are the guys who are going to be the widest on the pitch, and they're very much going to look to create that width. Um, and getting behind and they just act as a, a really important focal point of that kind of attacking unit uh, going forward. With Chiuamani in central defensive midfield, we've got a lot of instructions here. Starting off with defensive behaviour, cut passing lanes. It is a zonal or lane press, uh, which is whichever you prefer. Um, very much kind of similar to their set pieces. They like to go generally zonally orientated. They might use some people as blockers, but generally they are zonal they're a zonal lane pressing system attacking support is on stay back while attacking he'll look to act as that possession or pivot interceptions again something that's more personal to chuamani not so much as part of the system he's on aggressive interceptions you're going to notice him very much trying to um intercept aggressively but also just really trying to impose himself on opponents it's something that he's done his entire career sometimes to his detriment he's often um kind of drew cards as a result of that but it is kind of the way he likes to play, he likes to impose himself on the opposition and it can work for him at times. It can help him in that mould of the lone defensive midfielder. Defensive position is on cover centre. The two central midfielders ahead of him are the ones who are going to be looking to cover the wing. He'll hold, he'll hold that position in the central areas and man the fort basically. And then positioning freedom is deep line playmaker. This is going to allow him to drift between the width of the pitch and keep showing for the ball. Really help you to kind of trying to play out from the back and again, as I said earlier, act as that possessional pivot. Moving on to the central midfielders next, then starting off with Tony Kroos. You've got that player who is kind of less risky in terms of getting forward he's going to kind of man the fort a little bit more as well act as that another kind of possessional pivot a deeper lying playmaker so he's on stay about while attacking for attacking support and he's also on stay on the edge of the box of the cross he's the one who's going to keep things ticking over he's going to look to kind of spearhead attacking moves from a slightly deeper position compared to the other central midfielder which we'll get on to shortly. Uh, and his positioning freedom is on free roam, and this is going to allow him to pick up lots of space in the central areas, um, particularly in FIFA as well. It's not so much in real life where you've got him darting all around a pitch, but on FIFA what it's going to do, it's going to replicate his role more because he likes to drop into these pockets um, and show for the ball, and that's how he kind of keeps things ticking and allows attacks to kind of progress, spearheading them. Defensive position, as we spoke about, he's on cover wing. With Modric over on the other side, he's still on stable while attacking because you don't want him making runs in and beyond the striker, but 
Support on crosses is getting to the box for the cross. Um, and what this is going to do naturally, as we spoke about in the tactics, is you're going to see him getting into the box more um, and supporting those crossing situations. He's on stick to position, full positioning freedom, and then his defensive position is cover wing. I'm also going to show you how this changes slightly depending on when Valverde plays there. Um, and then maybe they bring someone like Rodrigo onto the wing as well. So do keep an eye out for that. With the two wingers then, different instructions, starting off with Vinicius Jr. He's on comeback on defence, you're going to get him tracking back, um, but then his chance creation is cut inside, he often likes to angle his runs, that's really um, part of what makes him so kind of deadly. Remember, you're going to have Benzema, as we'll speak about shortly, dropping off, so he's going to kind of utilise and exploit that space. Support runs are on getting behind, again utilising that pace, looking to act as that layer of penetration. And then support on crosses is getting to the box for the cross. With Valverde on the other side, very different instructions. He's still on comeback on defence and he's still on cut inside to support those central areas to look to kind of utilise the space that Benzema's got. But this time with support runs, he's actually on come short. Occasionally he does get in behind, but generally what he does is he kind of drifts inside and, and adds a kind of numerical advantage to Real Madrid where it's really crowded out in that central area now. Benzema, the three central midfielders, Valverde, all in there as well. You're looking to drag the left back, opposition left back in, and then it creates space for Carvajal at right wing back or right back who is then going to overlap and exploit that space. And that's really, really important. It's a good way of complementing those two pieces on that right-hand side. He's also on uh, getting to the box for the cross as well. With Benzema, we've spoken about it already. False nine, he's going to drop off. He's doing that more and more as he gets into, older into his career particularly since Carlo Ancelotti has, has joined there as well. Um, he's dropping into midfield and allowing runners in and beyond him. That's why also you have forward runs. It's going to help with the fact that he's on false nine. He's not going to kind of just stay within that realm. When the ball does surpass him, he's then going to storm forward and join in with those attackers getting forward. Uh, his support runs is drift wide. You often find him finding space on the outside areas of the pitch. It's really kind of good because defenders don't follow him. And as a result, he picks up a lot of space. He's often left unmarked. And it really helps that kind of fluidity of movement. Vinicius, Valverde, Benzema, all these guys rotating around creates an absolute nightmare a mismatch option for opposition defences. And finally, his defence support is stay forward. So I spoke about surely that it does change a little bit depending on the personnel. Sometimes Valverde comes into central midfield and then allows have someone like Rodrigo. Uh, on the wing. This time, what you'll find with Rodrigo is he's very much looking to get in behind. So whilst he does cut inside and makes room for Carvajal to, to make the runs, this time he's looking to penetrate the back line. They'll often do this if they do want a little bit more penetration. They want a bit more emphasis on counter-attack as well. Uh, with Valverde, what you'll find is you actually want balanced attack rather than stable while attacking. He's going to look to create a little bit more movement. Again, this helps with penetration. It helps with more high higher volume of movement um, and it depends on on kind of the opposition what they're going to do with that uh, support and crosses is still on getting to the box for the cross so what about the attacking game plan then just a couple of tweaks uh the depth is pushed up a little bit this time to 70 but what more kind of noticeable with Real Madrid is when they are really pushing for that goal is they become quite wide in the defensive shape this is why with boosters up to 50 you'll find a lot more gaps forming because they're trying to get out more to the opposition they're trying to press a little bit more they're leaving more open spaces as a result so the width does increase up to 50 this time making you a little bit more vulnerable but helping in those pressing situations the width also goes up to 70. They do become more crossing orientated. They do try and get the ball out wide. Again, a little bit more desperation mode, but still within the realm of the system. Uh, so we move this up to 70, giving you a wide shape. And with regards to them kind of looking to cross the ball in more, we then move players in the box up to nine, giving you four to five players in the box. You're going to have the front three. You're probably going to have the central midfielder, which will often likely be Valverde in this case. And then also one of the fullbacks is probably going to get in there as well on the opposing side of the man who is crossing the ball. So there's a lot there to kind of think about as well. With regards to player instructions, this time the central midfielder's role is on get forward as opposed to balance or stay back while attacking with this attacking instruction. Uh, and on top of that, with Vinicius Jr., rather than come back on defence, he's actually on basic defensive support um, as he's kind of less likely to trap back and looks to kind of help the team get the ball up quicker and acts as another focal point along with uh, Benzema. 
So, with that being said, it's just about time to round it off there. A really meaty one this one was, but really fun to cover and create as well. A very, very challenging one. I very much enjoyed it. If you want to see the full ratings and the breakdown of this tactic, remember, on my Patreon, you can find the tactics package where you can see all of that and see how it ranks to all of the other tactics that we have recreated on this channel. If you've enjoyed this video, drop a like, ring the bell to get notifications every time I upload, as well as subscribing, obviously. Before we go into the gameplay, which you're going to see at the tactic very, very shortly, uh, do want to remind you to go and check out my gaming podcast as well. The link to that is down below. Links to all of your favorite podcasting apps, whichever ones you prefer. Don't forget to give me a follow on Twitter. The link is down below. And also go and follow my podcast channel as well. The link to that is also in the description. On that note, we're going to finish it there. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you soon.